We start off with issue number one, The Three Musketeers. When I was a young lad, my dad would take me to the comic book store. The one here in our local town was called Duckburg Comics. And while I was searching for Iron Man, Spider-Man, the Fantastic Four, Batman, any superhero comic, my dad would be off to the side getting me some Classics Illustrated and the occasional Disney Dell, Donald Duck. Now, I didn't mind so much because, hey, they were comic books and they were getting added to my collection, which was great. But I didn't really appreciate them so much until I became a teenager and I realized these are pretty cool stories. And I, of course, really loved the uh, Carl Barks, Donald Ducks. But uh, here's the kind of Monte Cristo number three and the painted cover version of that. I really started to appreciate these the older I got. And then I discovered that there are some collectors that like these line drawn covers and some just only want to get the painted covers. Here's the last of the Mohicans number four and my reader copy of that. So here's the line drawn Moby Dick. This is issue number five. I'm going to go through all 169 issues of Classics Illustrated. Now I probably won't have every painted copy or uh, alternate version cover and sometimes there's 21 editions. You're not going to see me have all 21 editions of the Tale of Two Cities here but uh, I'll try to get you the line drawn cover and I'll try to show you the painted cover. Here, uh, here's Robin Hood. This is issue number seven and the painted cover Robin Hood. The Arabian Nights were some very cool stories. Uh, don't know who wrote that. It was written so long ago. I don't know if they really ever figured out who wrote the original. Here's the Victor Hugo. Uh, we're on uh, issue number nine of Classics Illustrated. Here's the painted cover of that. Here's Robinson Crusoe. This is issue number 10. If you're trying hard to get your youngsters interested in Classics Illustrated, have him stare at this cover for a long time and tell him he's been alone on this island for many, many, many days and all of a sudden he discovers a footprint. And it's not his. And now he knows there's someone on the island that could probably kill him. If you talk it up like that, you might get them somewhat interested. So after number 10, we have number 11, Don Quixote, who thought the windmills were alive. Or bad monsters or something. He's kind of a real kooky story. Number 12, the Rip Van Winkle and Headless Horseman. I really enjoyed the Headless Horseman part. Now later, after the, uh, after the scare happened with the... Uh, comic books people decided to start toning things down so by the time they're reprinting Rip Van Winkle they've dropped the Headless Horseman part of the story here's the painted cover and speaking of uh, needing to tone down the scariness here's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde so we're on issue number 13 so he's a real scary monster and so now, he's still a scary monster, but it's, the focus seems to be more on Dr. Jekyll in the laboratory. Here's my painted uh, copy version, painted cover version. You'll notice this edition didn't have a price tag on it, it just says number 13. So moving on to uh, number 14, we'll have Westward Ho. And I don't have a painted cover for that, but that's okay. As long as I have issue number 14, I have the full set. Uh, here's Uncle Tom's Cabin. The, uh, this copy had some black tape on the spine. And when it fell off one day, you could see why the previous owner had tried to cover that up as best he could. So it kind of ruins it in my opinion, but uh, still looks pretty good. Because you had to go out and get a better copy. There's what he was covering up. Beautiful artwork there. And I realize some people don't like this particular story, so here's the painted cover version. We're going to move on pretty quick here. So that was number 15. Here's number 16, Gulliver's Travels. You see all the little, little people at the bottom there. 
The pavement cover is probably a little bit better, in my opinion, because uh, they get to show you a cute little elephant there. But either version's fine. And you don't have to get all of these. You, to me, if you just wanted one, uh, like number 17 here, just get the line drawn cover. You don't have to shop around for the painted cover. And uh, here's Hunchback of Notre Dame. Real creepy looking cover. Later when they reprinted that, they kind of toned it down. The monster is, uh, he's just a shadow in the background. And the painted cover is pretty cool. Uh, for the reasons of just getting the gargoyle. I want to zoom in here and let you see the gargoyle. So that's pretty cool for a painted copy. I'm going to call them painted copy every now and then. I mean to say painted cover edition. Here's number 19. The line drawn Huckleberry Finn. Now at the bottom on the boat, uh, it says uh, by Mark Twain. Uh, for some reason, this edition said Mark Twain. But uh, in the painted copy editions, it said Samuel L. Clemens. Now, I realize that's the same guy, and I'm not calling that a mistake. I'm just uh, pointing it out to you that, for whatever reason, they weren't consistent. So here's Mark Twain, and then the painted edition, underneath the title Huckleberry Finn, it says by Samuel L. Clemens. Once again, this isn't a mistake, just I don't know why they chose to do that. Maybe he started off being called Mark Twain and decided to go ahead and, I don't know. Here's the Corsican Brothers, issue number 20. Here's number 21, Three Famous Mysteries. I have a little Sherlock Holmes action. I think it's a pretty cool uh, cover. I'd, I'd actually like to own three books that look like this. That'd be pretty cool. The Flayed Hand. So the painted cover edition is the great detective with his bloodhound. Here's number 22, The Pathfinder. It's the line drawn. I don't have the painted cover. Got a bad bottom corner here, but it counts. I still have it. I love books in all conditions, as you can see. 23, Oliver Twist. And the painted cover. Here you say, may I have another? And 24, Connecticut Yankee and King Arthur's Court. And I know you're distracted by the Frankenstein off to the right, but we'll get to him in a second. There's some cover damage I'm pointing out. And the painted cover, Connecticut Yankee and King Arthur's Court. Absolutely beautiful artwork here. Issue 24. So here's issue 25, two years before the mast. It's about how hard it is to live aboard this ship with the really tough taskmaster. So now let's get to uh, Frankenstein. This is what you're probably waiting for. A real hard to get book. I have a couple of cover creases, bottom corner there, but uh, I am very, very, very happy with it. And no matter what edition you get, even the painted covers are look fabulous. This one's uh, painted by a guy named Norman Saunders. And he's being chased by this dog team I'm trying to get in for you. And he's on the run. Absolutely beautiful. Both, both, both editions. Here's the adventures of Marco Polo. Some people say that Marco made up a lot of his stuff, but later they retraced traced his steps and they found out that it seems like Marco Polo was telling the truth about all the crazy wild things he saw in his trip to Asia. Here's the painted cover. Looks pretty good. And number 28, Michael Strogoff. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. 
real vicious copies jabbing this wolf in the throat with his knife. Might be a little too rough for youngsters, but uh, it's pretty cool. So this is the line drawn cover. He goes from attacking wolves to getting ready to attack a bear. Here's the painted cover edition. Unfortunately, my copy has a little bitty uh, roughed up mark on the bear's mouth. So I, I like to pretend that this bear just happens to have rabies. And a cover that would need to be toned down later. This creepy guy with a knife is threatening this young boy. That would have to be uh, really looked into. I think my copy was trimmed a little funny. but uh, So when they re redid the cover, they showed you the prince and the pauper. Kind of really toned it down. And uh, this poor story uh, has been redone a billion times by different authors. Even Disney's taking a crack at it. I have two copies of the painted cover. And I jump over to number 30, uh, the Moonstone. False idol worship here. And I've got a bad corner crease on the bottom right, but uh, who cares? Looks great. Here's the Classics Illustrated. Note the uh, when the originals were saying Classic Comics, and then they shifted over to Classics Illustrated. But uh, still... I like them. Uh, doesn't matter which one I get, I'll, I'll take them all. The painted cover version looks pretty cool too. And here's the Black Arrow. You'll like the Black Arrow. He's the guy wearing all red. But don't forget folks, that's the Black Arrow, not the Red Arrow. The Black Arrow. And in his painted cover version, he's wearing green. So. Like an original green arrow, but it's the black arrow. He's pretty cool. Now here's Lorna Dune, number 32. A great cover. I, I believe the artist was uh, Matt Baker. I should go check. A really good uh, video videographer would have double-checked his facts and figures uh, ahead of time, but I believe it's Matt Baker. It's a beautiful illustration. Now they went from that great, great illustration to this painted cover which although it's good I I prefer the line drawn in this case sometimes I like the painted copies better but I, I think I prefer the line drawn better but this one's not so bad either and that's Lorna Dune number 33 is the adventures of Sherlock Holmes and I find uh, hard to find this one um, it doesn't show up too often probably only got one copy here's the mysterious island number 34 I think this uh, other copy I have has better colors on it mysterious island and then there was a painted cover version shows them all escaping in a hot air balloon I think hot air balloons were kind of in their infancy around the Civil War times but uh, Jules Verne was always kind of ahead of his time there great story. Here's the last days of Pompeii. We're on issue number 35 out of 169. Uh, people like to get this one because it has some Jack Kirby artwork inside. Uh, I, I point out some of his artwork in a in a video I did in the past. I'll be showing you a link to that later. The painted cover version of that, Last Days of Pompeii. The guy running for his life. Number 36. And the painted cover version. Number 37 is the Pioneers. Number 38, The Adventures of Cellini. Talk about a thrilling and exciting cover. Yes, sir. Standing in front of a, a Catholic Inquisition of some sort. Boy, that'll just fly off the newsstands. People can't wait to get... So they had to kind of update that with the painted cover. Showing a sword fight. Much better. Number 
Ah, Jane Eyre. Nothing like a guy falling in love, but then he says to the girl, I can't marry you just yet because I'm already married and my wife is a crazy lunatic. We keep locked up in the attic. So we must wait until she dies. Number 40, Mysteries. Probably the most famous story out of this one is The Pit and the Pendulum. And uh, the Marvel, Marvel Comics uh, did this one as well. Uh, number 41, 20 Years After. Written by, this is this part of the uh, Three Musketeers story. Uh, this cover, they didn't do too many times because the body in there is all bloody and it's very ominous looking. So they, uh, they quickly upgraded that the next time around, showing you the Three Musketeers. And, well, I think the first one was better, but your mileage may vary on these. And of course the painted cover for that edition. Try to get in close for some of the detail. So that's issue 41. Moving on to 42, The Swiss Family Robinson, a great story. Here's a lot of gunplay action. The painted cover to that shows the more gun action, this time towards a shark, which I highly recommend. Anytime you come across a shark, you should just shoot them. I really agree. Uh, even if you're at a private aquarium, just shoot. People will thank you later. And you all had great expectations for this next one, uh, number 43. And 44, The Mysteries of Paris. I should probably try to upgrade this one up. Uh, this old copy had a piece of uh, tape on the spine and over the years the tape has fallen away but it left kind of a discolored uh, section. But uh, as always I'm glad to have it. I'm glad to have a full run of these. Moving on to number 45, Tom Brown School Days. They made that into a movie which the movie was pretty good. It tells of the life of a uh, growing up, uh, I believe in England, having some hard times. Here's the painted cover version. Kidnapped. There's probably a, a line drawn version I don't have it, but uh, I've got a painted copy version, painted cover. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. We're on number 47 here. You should be shooting that shark, but, you know, when you're underwater, you got to make do. The painted cover was really cool, and I want you to see the buildings underwater there. They're kind of faint and subdued. It makes it a absolutely brilliant painting. And they did another version of it uh, as soon as my camera gets in focus there. Another shark attack. David Copperfield. And the painted cover. Alice in Wonderland. I don't have the original edition. It was all line drawn. This is kind of a different version of that where the girl is painted, but everybody else is still line drawn. Tom Sawyer is number 50. Now 51 is The Spy. And 
in the painted cover of this body. Fifty two would be the House of Seven Gables. Kind of a creepy ghost with a knife. The painted cover version. Christmas Carol. Next one's really cool, The Man in the Iron Mask. And the painted edition was, I think, fabulous. And I had a reader copy as well. And Silas Marner. And I have a few editions of the painted covers. Toilers of the Sea. Song of Hiawatha. Hiawatha is kind of like a superhero. He can do all kinds of wild and crazy things. And we're about one third done here. Here's the prairie, number 58. Some really good reds on this cover. Number 59, Wuthering Heights. Number 60, Black Beauty. Sixty-one, The Woman in White. And the painted edition. Western Stories by Brett the Hitman Hart. Just kidding, folks. Man Without a Country. Treasure Island. And I have the painted edition, but I have another copy of it as well. Long John Silvers decided to reproduce this for everybody. With a spiffy new dollar ninety-five cover price. Sixty-five Benjamin Franklin. Now the next one, uh, number sixty-six. They only printed it one time. They refused to reprint it. So when you look on the back of Classics Illustrated to get reprints or order ones you missed, and I make mention of that on one of my old uh, videos here. I'm showing you. Just a little nine minute video. If you got a chance, go check it out. I go into detail of why they uh, did not reissue the cloister and the hearth. It was uh, Classics Illustrated were bought by Gilberton Pre Publications, a Catholic group, and I, I explain why they didn't after that. So you'll notice on the back of each edition, you can't order number 66. If you're looking for an absolute rarity, then uh, get your hands on number 66. Here is Julius Caesar. This must be his funeral. Mark Anthony is presiding over it. Written by William Shakespeare. Have a couple of painted cover editions of it. You'll see uh, Julius Caesar again, but it won't be this edition. It'll be a book that he wrote coming up later in the series. Now, number 69, Around the World in 80 Days, 
If I was the editors, I would have held off on this one until issue number 80. Then it can be number 80 around the world in 80 days, but I wasn't there for them to consult. So, still a great story. Number 70, The Pilot. Number uh, 71, The Man Who Laughs by Victor Hugo. Oregon Trail. The Painted Edition. The Black Tulip. You'd be surprised what little plant could cause all kinds of trouble. And of course my reader copy of that the midshipman easy the lady of the lake by sir walter scott and the painted edition looks pretty cool and the prisoner of zenda and you already see it off to the right there's the painted editions of that by anthony hope And here's a cool one, the Iliad. And you start getting into mythology. You get some really wild stuff here. Later I'll show you a Spanish edition of the Iliad when we're all done. The painted cover is just fabulous. These charioteers and the horse just look beautiful. And behind that, we have number 78, Joan of Arc. Cyrano de Bergerac. Number 80, White Fang by Jack London. And I'm an absolute sucker for this edition. I think it's beautiful and even the background, look at that detail. I'm a sucker for a dog or wolf or any canine cover. Now the original Odyssey was all line drawn, but this one had a painted cover edition put on top of the line drawn. And you can see mine had a little bit of some mice got a hold of it before I got my hands on it, some of the previous owner. And here's the painted copy with the Cyclops, looking really weird. 82, Master of Ballantre, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. We're always burying this guy. Really weird stories. And the Jungle Book, this is before Disney got their hands on it. Jungle Book is a classic. Here's some great the wolves running around. And they did another painted edition. I think the first one's probably a little better. 84, the gold bug. Eighty-five, Sea Wolf by Jack London. should be shooting those sharks. I don't know why they're not. I know why they're not. Better color on this one. All right, 86 under two flags. A Midsummer's Night's Dream. And 
Johnny Cash in Crime and... No, it's not Johnny Cash. For a split second, I always think he looks like Johnny Cash, but it's not. Green mansions are the place to be. Except I wouldn't want to be in this guy's shoes. The Call of the Wild by Jack London. It's probably the best copy I could find of this. Usually, when I find an edition, the pinks are really blurry in the background. As you'll see when I show you the other one I have. They look kind of like this. That's what, that's what you'll usually find in the wild. Here's the courtship of Miles Standish. Now this one had a, for some reason had some black marking on it, but uh, that's what it's supposed to look like. Number nine three, Puddinghead Wilson by Mark Twain. I think he borrowed from his own ideas of uh, Prince and the Pauper. Having two people uh, switched at birth. And another painted edition. Ah, uh, 94, David Balfour. All Quiet on the Western Front, a World War I story from the German perspective. Daniel Boone. King Solomon's Mines. Red Badge of Courage. Obviously, he realized that he left his water running back home and he's going to go take care of that real quick. And number 99, Hamlet. So, number 100 starts us off with Mutiny on the Bounty. William Tell. The White Company, good sword fight action here. Same guy that wrote Sherlock Holmes. Men Against the Sea is kind of like part two of Mutiny on the Bounty. Bring Them Back Alive by Frank Buck. From the Earth to the Moon. The best copy I've been ever, ever been able to find Usually you find more faded ones like this. Here's the Buffalo Bill. King of the Kyber Rifles. Number 108, Knights of the Round Table. Here is the part three to the Mutiny on the Bounty story, Pitcairn's Island. A study in Scarlet. And a better copy. The Talisman. I hope to go a little faster here. We're getting near the end. Just beautiful artwork. Kit Carson. His title is kind of see-through, transparent. The white cloud and the blue sky. Forty-five Guardsmen. Now they should have made this issue number forty-five, but once again, I wasn't there and they wouldn't have listened to me anyway. Number 114, the Red Rover. How I found Dr. Livingston. The famous missionary in Africa. The bottle imp. And I'll get close, you can see how goofy this guy looks. It's not I Dream of Genie. Captain's Courageous. Ryan 
Rob Roy. Soldiers of Fortune. Number 120, this guy really likes shopping at Target. Wild Bill Hickok is uh, quite a big deal in my part of the state of Missouri. Mutineers. Fang and Claw by Frank Buck. Just absolutely beautiful. Speaking of beauty, War of the Worlds. This is stunning. Oxbow Incident. Number 126, The Downfall. King of the Mountains. Beth Davy Crockett Here's the Caesar book I told you about where he wrote himself Some guys decided to decorate the cover with a little battle flag for Julius totally unnecessary but uh, oh well I'll still accept it Covered wagon. He's reloading that gun. And he better hurry. The Dark Frigate. Now, 133 is a gorgeous uh, copy of the Time Machine. Romeo and Juliet. Waterloo. Here's Lord Jim. 137, The Little Savage. And here's a beauty, Journey to the Center of the Earth by Jules Verne. Reign of Terror. Jungle Trails Castle Dangerous Now 142 is Abraham Lincoln Here's Kim written by uh, the same person that wrote Jungle Book First Men in the Moon a great cover And they did another cover, which is pretty cool too. Check out the Moon Men. Uh, they don't exactly have fingers, they just kind of wrap their coils around things. Very, very, very cool. And The Crisis by Winston Churchill. No, not the one you're thinking of. This is about the Civil War. With Fire and Sword. to the lightning round. Here's Ben-Hur, number 147, written by General Lou Wallace. And I just happened to throw this uh, Dell comic in there, Ben-Hur, as well. I'm a big Ben-Hur fan, so excuse that. Back to Classics Illustrated. Here's The Buccaneer. Not from a novel, but uh, a movie. So this adapts basically a movie. Here's absolute beauty. Off on a comet. They would advertise this one on the back of many of the classics illustrated. Getting slammed right off planet Earth and you land on a comet. And you figure out how do I get back. Just beautiful. 
technically excuse that one. They decided to redo that off on a comedy. They went from this to a couple of guys in a basket. Which is fine. Good, good artwork. But uh, how can you bypass this first edition? The Virginian... One by the sword. Wild animals I have known. And because it's got a good canine on the cover, you know I had to get another copy of that one. The Invisible Man. And notice the uh, title is see-through, which is cool. And it's just an absolutely beautiful cover. The Conspiracy of Pontiac. So in the background, I don't know if you can make it out, but there's like a map of the Michigan area of the Northwest. Here's the Lion of the North, number 155, 156, The Conquest of Mexico. Some great colors coming out of this one. I have a darkened copy just below this. Lives of the Hunted. Conspirators. You know what we're all accused of these days. And the octopus. The Food of the Gods by H.G. Wells. Cleopatra 161. Robur the Conqueror by Jules Verne. This guy is a highly advanced blimp of some kind that terrorizes everybody. Well over a hundred years ago. And uh, Master of the World by Jules Verne. The Cossack Chief. The Queen's Necklace. We're getting really close here. One sixty-six. Tigers and Traders by Jules Verne. That is a mechanical elephant. It's operating like a taxi. Some guys are riding in it, uh, crossing India, I believe. And Faust. Real crazy book. I've got two of those. Freedom's Cause, this is 168. And the last one, to finish the run, 169 Negro Americans, the early years. Now, that is a, a whole run, 1 through 169, with the uh, extras, of course. There were other books printed by uh, Gilberton publishers. But before I get into those, here is the Spanish version of the Iliad I talked to you about earlier. Notice the logo at the top is very similar to the Classics Illustrated logo. But the open book design and the artwork is more Marvel Comics type style. But I think they really liked that Classics Illustrated uh, logo, so they wanted to do that. But anyway, here Classics Illustrated did some books for very young, young uh, readers called the Junior Series. Notice this first issue is 501. Basically, they set aside the first 500 slots for Classics Illustrated. Of course, they only went to 169. But they figured that would give themselves enough room. Here is a... 
uh, World Around Us, which is another publication uh, Classics Illustrated did. I'll show you some more of those pretty soon, but I just wanted to show you some of the juniors first. So these were given to like kindergarten or first grade. Very basic, easy to read. Uh, it's amazing any of these survived when you give them to kindergartners. But uh, very simplistic stories, kind of like fairy tales. But uh, I'm not going to show all of them. Just a good sample of them. Here's a young Captain Strange Life. Really neat stuff. Now, they've started to reprint those. This one's a newer reprint. You see the barcode at the bottom. And I'm trying to show you how smaller they are. Uh, they're not as big as the, uh, the original comics. So a much smaller booklet, but uh, printed in Canada. So they're starting to reproduce some of these. Classics Illustrated also produced A Boy's Life. Here's issue number two. Uh, it had stories for scouts, but it also had some good comics in there as well. But you can also start collecting those if you want to. And here's one of those special issues I told you about. This one's the Rough Rider. Now, there's about 10 special issues. You can get those off to the side. Or you could insert these into your lineup of 169. For example, this one is called... 141A. So if you wanted to, you could slip this right behind issue number 141. I don't do that, but uh, you could if you wanted to. Here's Crossing the Rockies. Um, it was obviously owned by a lady named Beth because she signed her name on the cover. Here's some more world around us. I'll just go through a few of these. You don't have to get all these either, but they are interesting to have. And they were all over the place as far as subject matter. And we're just about done here. I wanted to show you just a couple of more World Around Us. A couple of more of the special issues. So, for example, this one was... Uh, 159A, you could you could put this in bes uh, right behind 159. I don't do that, but you could. Your mileage may vary. 138A. So they were all over the place. And finally, as a side note, there was another book called Famous Authors Illustrated. Here happens to be number three of that series. I believe Gilberton Publications bought them out as well and started using their artwork for other editions, but... Anyway, I tried to be a little thorough on this. I wanted to show you all 169. Please give it a thumbs up if you'd like. And don't forget to check out Graphic Man every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.